Good morning and welcome as we gather on this, the third Sunday after Pentecost, in a, in a time where so much is going on around, around us, around the world, uh, things that consume our thoughts, our minds, uh, but we give thanks for this opportunity, uh, wherever you are, as we welcome you, as we join together in worship, as we gather here uh, to know the hope and put our trust in the God who promised to be present in our lives each and every day. And so we welcome you wherever you are as you join us in worship. Of course, also this weekend, our in-person worship begins. It's been a little over three months since we met. And so we will welcome those who gather here as well. Uh, again, inviting people, asking people to wear masks and also to, to recognize some physical distancing. We have pews that are roped off, taped off every other pew, uh, but we want to be safe, uh, but we also want to gather in that opportunity in God's house to worship. And so whether in person, whether online, uh, we welcome all people as we gather together in worship. Uh, this weekend, as we celebrate Father's Day, uh, we wish a happy Father's Day. Uh, certainly there are some who maybe haven't had that great experience, and so our thoughts and prayers are with them, but also we pray uh, that we as fathers, all who are fathers, that we might be that example uh, for others to follow as we share and lift up the faith that God has brought into our lives. And so a happy Father's Day to fathers on this weekend. And then finally, uh, for your prayers, uh, just asking for prayers for the family of Dale Nelson. Dale passed away Thursday morning, and so his celebration of life will be this coming week. Uh, but we continue to lift up the family of Dale Nelson in our prayers, and then also adding to the prayers uh, for Grace Rowland, Grace had a heart attack on Friday morning and is now in the hospital. So we continue to lift Grace up in our prayers as well this day. And certainly our prayers for all people as we journey together in this time, as we seek God's presence and God's peace in our lives. And so again, we welcome each of you as we gather for worship this day. And we begin with our opening hymn, O God, My Faithful God. Oh, 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading today is taken from the book of Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me, like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Jesus. God. God. We will now read from Psalm 69 responsibly. Surely, for your sake, I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, 
and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sin. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies, deliver me. The second reading today is taken from the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live within him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, 
and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. I know I've shared this story before, but it seemed one that was appropriate to begin with today. It was a, a son at home on a Sunday morning. And he woke up and he said, Ah, oh, Mom, I don't want to go to church today. He said, the, the people there really, they don't all like me. Some of them, they make fun of me. And I know they don't all listen to, to the things I might have to say. I'd rather just stay home in bed. His mom said, son, you need to go to church. And so he asked, he said, give me two reasons why, two good reasons. His mom said, well, first of all, you're 58 years old. And second, you're the pastor. I don't want to go to church today. Seems like an odd thing to say after we haven't met in person for worship in just over three months now. You would think I'd be thrilled to be back, and I am thrilled to see more people here. I am thrilled that we have opportunity to come together, not only in person, but for those who choose to still be at home and sharing in this time of worship. But I'll be the first to admit, I've lost sleep over this Sunday. Wanting to be together, but yet also wanting to be safe and knowing that even the precautions we take, the, the face mask or the distancing, the, the not singing, that too is part of my fear that people come and it's not worship as they know it. It's not worship as you know it. And yet opportunity to be together in person. So yes, the heart that breaks is saying, I don't want to go to church this morning. But it's not just the physical things going on. It's also the lessons that we have today, some tough words. I mean, think about it, the, the gospel reading. I was reading through it early in the week and I thought, you know, this is a Sunday I'd kind of like to be on vacation. Tough words. Jesus says, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. This is Jesus, the God of peace, peace on earth, peace, goodwill. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father. Happy Father's Day, by the way. Not exactly the text we would choose on a Father's Day. But tough words, not just the Gospel reading, even the Old Testament reading from Jeremiah. It's a lament, a lament being an expression of sorrow for some kind of loss. Actually, throughout Scripture, when it uses laments, when we hear them read, it usually begins with first a complaint and then maybe a comparison to the way things are now compared to what was so good before. And then it's followed up by a, a plea for God's help and yet ultimately ends with an expression of trust, of hope, of faith in God. Jeremiah was called by Yahweh, God, to prophesy a disaster coming upon the people of Judah. Now think about that. The people of Judah, those were Jeremiah's own people. So Jeremiah is told to prophesy disaster against the people of Judah. 
And then Yahweh God tells Jeremiah that, well, people are going to fight against you because of this, but still wants him to go ahead and do this. They're going to fight against you, but, but remember, I will be there with you. I will be your strength. Now, in a sense, it sounds simple. You just prophesy the word, I'll be there to take care of you. But think about all that entails for Jeremiah. Think of the sorrow, his broken heart at having to say these things to his own people. Or early on, Jeremiah, who was told he wasn't, he shouldn't get married or have kids. Wondering what that would be like, not just for his life, but towards the end of his life, to have family there to, to support and to share with him. But then also one of the priests, Pashar, who not only struck Jeremiah, but ended up putting him in stocks the way they punish people. And maybe that now makes more sense what Jeremiah says in this lament. He says, I have become a laughing stock all day long. He understood recent history what stock meant. That wood with holes cut out where they would put the person punished, the arms in there, the legs, the feet in there. And yeah, on the one hand, after a night in those stocks, you're going to be very uncomfortable. But even worse than that was that you were set somewhere to be on public display where people could ridicule you, could make fun of you. And so this lament talks about the difficult things. And yet what's amazing, again, a person of God is still being able to say thank you to God, still being able to recognize God's presence in the midst of what is so difficult. As Jeremiah later on in the text is able to say, but the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. And even the last verse of that Old Testament reading Jeremiah says, sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. After all those tough things, and maybe even the complaint that Jeremiah threw out there, yet he was able to say, sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The life of the needy. You know, I'm guessing Jeremiah looked at himself as one of those who was needy. And perhaps we too are a part of that need for what God brings to us. Some tough words to face this morning, including the gospel reading that I touched on very briefly at the beginning. Now, one of the podcasts I was listening to this last week, a lot of Bibles, they'll give subtitles letting us know what the following words will be about. Maybe the, the cleansing of the leper or the Samaritan woman at the well. Well, one particular version of the Bible, I'm not sure exactly which one, put a subheading on these words as this. Stuff, Jesus said. You know, maybe they don't all fit directly together, probably weren't said right after each other. And yet there was a message here. Jesus warns his disciples that their ministry in his name will meet with opposition. In fact, he's kind of saying expect opposition. I mean, I'm getting opposed, Jesus says. So why would you expect any different if you are doing what you are called to do? But he also goes on to say, don't fear people who can kill you. Rather, more important, fear failing God. For that has eternal consequences. Tough words, of course, Jesus softens a little as we go on. Jesus who says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fail, will fall to the ground apart from your father. 
and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. It's a way of saying, God's got this, or, or maybe better yet, more personal, God's got you. Tough words, called to, to challenge, called to, to reach out when maybe facing that opposition, but always that reminder of God's presence with us. And understanding not everyone is going to get this. All that talk about son against father, family members against one another, it's nothing saying that family is not good. But rather, how do I honor my commitment to Christ in the midst of other things that I honor? Family is important, but God should and must come first. You know, as I was thinking about these readings, my thought went to the stock market. Now, what on earth does a stock market have to do with any of these readings? You know, for those that may watch it every day or every so often, we know that three months ago or more it crashed. We know they said we're in a recession. And of course, it makes sense, all that's going on around us the pandemic, COVID-19, strained race relations, unemployment. I was watching on the news just the other day, Thursday morning. There's a long line of people waiting in an unemployment line, not waiting to get money, but waiting just to sign up. Six hours they wait in line because it wasn't working online. It's all the things that are going bad, and yet, if you watch the market, it has been going up, up, and up. And I sometimes wonder why. But here's the interesting thing, and I wish I had written down the wording along the way. How often have we heard when we see the market jump that it is in hope of a cure? How many times have we heard that? Different medicines. Anytime there's something positive to cling to, the things seem to jump, the stocks. In hopes of a cure, in hopes of a government intervention to help in some way. And you know, I think how easy we hold on to that hope and yet we fail to when it comes to our life of faith. And to realize that that hope in that financial market has no eternal consequences. When what God offers is more sure, and it does have eternal consequences. Or maybe even to take it one step further. I look at the stock market, I think, you know, the reality is not everyone in this world, in fact, a small percentage can even afford to get into it in the first place. And so that hope that is lifted up is only for a certain few. But you see, when it comes to God, that hope, that promise, that faith is available to everyone. Everyone. Now I know I started by saying, I don't want to go to church today. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy, even in the midst of hard times, happy to be able to hope and trust in the God who says, I will be there with you. Amen.
confess together our faith in God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Peace be 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 with you, church family. I miss you. Peace be with you. Now, as we come to the time where the offering is received, as we think about that hope, trust, and faith that we bring to God, it is not our strength, but rather it is allowing God to work in and through us, to allow God to mold us into the people that we are, God's people. And it is that which gives us opportunity to then serve and to give back to God uh, through ourselves, our time, and our possessions. And so we pause as we consider that hope that we place in God. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. As we continue with the prayers of the church, uh, to the words, Hear us, O God, your response is, Your mercy is great. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, 
you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God. And mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill far too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. In our prayers this morning, we pray for families grieving the loss of a loved one, especially this morning for the family of Dale Nelson, for the comfort and the hope that comes through your promise of life eternal. We pray for health, healing, and peace for Lorraine, Jeff, Caitlin, Dr. Bob, Dell, Bud, Grace, and for those with cancer and those undergoing cancer treatment, Darlene, Pastor Matt, Jolene, Lynn, Denny, Phyllis, Connie, Ben. And also for those we now name in the silence of our hearts. For your presence, your peace, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Yeah.
with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 